I'm trying to figure out if the University of Washington is the place for me. Um, as I zoom in close, um, the, the roads resolve into this um, seamless aerial image. This is a synthetic aerial perspective on the university uh, and on anywhere that you might want to zoom in uh, that's uh, looking obliquely at 45 degrees, which really gives you a much better sense of, of the environment from the air than uh, the, the nadir view, the view straight down from the air would. Uh, and as I move closer in, um, notice that there was a, an interesting transition there, and we're now looking at a single aerial image. Uh, we really want to show you the original data bound to space, not just that composed and synthesized version of the data. Uh, and as I move around, I'm going to transition from one aerial image to the next, uh, very much in the manner of, of photosynth, which, um, uh, which of course was, uh, was a wonderful joint development project that, that, we, that we did uh, with the University of Washington. Its lineage comes from phototourism, uh, which was written by uh, Noah Snapley right here in this department. Uh, now, as we go even closer in, we get beyond the level of what we can represent. Um, let me get my bearings again, the fountain. Uh, we go beyond the, the level of resolution that we can represent uh, from the air. And we come down to the ground. Now, this imagery from the ground, of course, uh, you can't collect just using um, aerial cameras. These things are collected uh, using a device that looks like this. It, it rides on top of a car. Um, we think that this is actually rather clumsy and, um, and has uh, problems in scaling up to the kind, of, uh, the kind of depth and richness and ubiquity that we'd like. Uh, we're, we're experimenting with techniques more like this one and this one and this one in order to continue to collect and bring it, uh, bring it indoors and uh, really scale, scale this out to, to everywhere. Uh, now, this is, uh, this is of course what that particular camera <coughs> collected at one moment in time. But if I, uh, if I launch now this uh, map application uh, called Streetside Photos, uh, which we just released a couple of um, weeks ago, then uh, what I'm seeing over here are uh, Flickr images. Uh, they're sort of Creative Commons uh, Flickr images uh, that uh, start off uh, geotagged. Now, when you geotag a Flickr image, of course, it only positions it very approximately in space. But uh, what we do is we use more of that uh, sort of uh, photosynth type magic to bind those Flickr images directly to our own imagery. So these are images of uh, the former home of, of computer science um, at, at the UW. I think everybody is quite, <laughs> quite happy that, that you've moved. Um, <laughs> uh, so that, that registration of that Flickr image with, uh, with the imagery that's collected by, by us really shows you how the head content that we collect and the tail content that users collect bind together in space. This is a simple example, just a single photo but as we extend this to, um, uh, to entire synths, other forms of collection, video, semantic collection, this starts to get very interesting. Now, this is not just imagery, which uh, should be apparent as I move through, th through space. Right? There's an entire three-dimensional model that's been inferred uh, from, from this photography. And um, so our information about the semantics of space begins with pictures, and uh, then it extends to, um, uh, to models and geometry. And uh, then, of course, it extends beyond that to uh, all of the different sorts of abstract information that can be connected to, uh, to place. And I'd say, uh, if I've navigated correctly, I think this is where we are right now. Let's, uh, let's fly back up. Okay, so uh, now I'm gonna switch gears a little bit, uh, going back to my uh, student role play. And uh, let's, let's take off um, photos and pull up instead local lens. What local lens is doing is binding another sort of information to, the, uh, to space, to the map. These are um, blobs. These are hyperlocal blobs uh, that are being crawled in real time. So I, this is a very risky demo to give in public because I never know what kind of thing is going to come up. Uh, this is from 10.07. Um, but all of these little uh, pins that have appeared on the map represent um, the, a location that was mined, uh, that was referenced in one of those blogs, and it's mined in real time. So, uh, you know, this happened at 7.22 this morning, the taco fire truck on the, cor on the, on the corner of, uh, right. So the, the, the taco truck will soon be repaired. This might well influence my decision about whether or not to come to the University of Washington. <laughs> so, um, so binding all of that information to space lets me explore these things uh, through space, through time, 
and, and through content. So it provides a much more multifaceted and multidimensional way of, of exploring and experiencing that information. Um, now, what's nearby is another example of, um, of, a, of a map app. This one, is, uh, this one has a lot of, this one is, is useful um, really often because what it's really about is exploring a region in space and telling me about all of the businesses nearby. So uh, in this case, um, if I'm a film buff, I, um, I might be interested in what sorts of movie theaters are near the UW. And uh, this is good news because uh, Landmark is a great independent theater. So uh, I've got all sorts of structured information that has flowed in from all of these entities. And uh, so I can see, of course, the, the, the ratings and the data and so on, um, and, uh, and, the, and the website. And, um, and I can dive in and have a look through that same first person imagery. So I've bound together the semantic information and the ratings and the blog information and, um, and, the, and the visual information that we captured ourselves uh, at this particular moment. It looks like it was playing um, the maid. So this really shows you all sorts of information binding together. It shows you the cloud, uh, this, spatial, uh, in, uh, this spatial incantation, if you like, of the cloud learning in a variety of ways from content, from users. Um, the ability for developers to let this environment become richer over time, I think, is also very key. And uh, so all of these map applications that I've been showing you uh, were written by uh, small teams, in some cases only one person in Microsoft Research. I'll close with, uh, with one that got a good reaction when we previewed it for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is Worldwide Telescope. It was originally a Microsoft Research project. And uh, so the integration of Worldwide Telescope, which is really done by, by, by one or two developers into Bing Maps, lets me uh, look up into the sky, and as I look up, uh, it's showing me the star field. Uh, so, um, of course, the star field doesn't stay fixed, so this is, at, this is right now at, at 10.34 a.m., what it would look like if we could turn off the sun. And, um, and we, can, uh, we, can look at, we can look at different times, different dates, um, when, when does Venus rise above the horizon and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, th and this is, of course, not just a, a picture. Uh, we, we have here a very, very rich uh, source of, ge of astronomical information, um, thanks to thanks to the, the engineers and the scientists who have worked on um, on worldwide telescope, and all of that is bound to space and time. So, um, you know, this is a um, this is some nice high resolution imagery of the moon that I think has just been added, and uh, of course, eventually you should be able to fly up into the universe and explore well beyond the Earth. Um, not that I think that really has very much to say about whether or not you'll go to the University of Washington. Okay, St Steve, I'll give it back to you at this point. Thank you so much.